I'm gonna go eat a mint since so I could like just taste this hot dog. I already went live. That's fine. <laughs> okay, perfect. They're fine. They got as long, it. As long as they can hear you, we'll be good. Oh, hello. Sarah is MIA currently, but she will be here soon. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It's extremely rude, but yes, it is okay. <laughs> Just kidding, you're good. No, you're good. They would like get, they would like crack down on you on that, like in dance competitions and stuff. Oh yeah, I never did dance competitions. So I, I really, I thought you were serious. I was no. like, okay, I'll go spit it out. No, I'm sorry. Gum is welcome. Is it? It's bubble mint. Perfect. Half bubble, half mint. <laughs> yep. Okay. We're live. There. Sue, you're the first one on YouTube. Sue on YouTube. Sue Liberto? Sue? Correct. Hey, Sue. She said, hi, first one here. <laughs> Is she a, a, a faithful follower? She's been with us since the beginning. That's awesome. Yeah. And she's not related to anybody. No. Really. Yes. She just stumbled upon us at the right time, right when we were starting, and that's awesome. She now helps moderate our oh, so Facebook people. group. She does a great job. Well, I was not first. Allow a chick said that. That's okay. Welcome anyway. I asked Brigham if he would be watching tonight, and he goes, "No." <laughs> He's playing Assassin's Creed. He's like, oh. I'm going to be playing Assassin's Creed like I have. Which Assassin's Creed? Night, Odyssey. Odyssey. The, the worst one Which so far. Which does look pretty cool, actually. I'm it's not going to lie. I've been awesome. watching him play it, and it looks pretty cool. The, the storyline's a little interesting. But... Sarah, how are we looking? We doing okay over there? We're doing great. Good, good, good. Am On I Facebook. Am going to be stealing from your tree? Uh-huh, right? we're sharing. I get my own. You get your own. Camel's on a part of the cool thing. Oh, I'm going to look at it. Hi, from Ohio. <laughs> Sue, <laughs> Sue Luberto. She said, uh, yep, original groupie. Original groupie. Original groupie. <laughs> OG. OG. Oh, we have people joining in for the first time. Wait, Rosalie. Wait. Heather Condiff. Heather. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Mom. <laughs> she said, hey, with 14 Ys. I, I believe that. Veronica, it's also her first time. <laughs> Laura's Four already. Rest. Oh, I like that. Laura's already coming in with the joke. You ready? Keenan, I'm talking to you. Sorry. What, what, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Sorry. Why did the trees need to take a nap? Uh, I have no idea. Forest. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. That is a good one. Gosh, forest. Forest. <laughs> no, one of my favorite jokes was when uh, somebody was like, why does Snoop Dogg carry an umbrella? <laughs> I remember this one, but I can't remember the phrase. I don't know. Faux drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I literally laughed out loud when somebody put oh that joke God. in. That's good. Made me laugh. Oh, uh, Kristen said she's just watching tonight. Dog not feeling well. So sorry to hear about that, Kristen. Leslie is back after six months away. Welcome back. So glad you're back. Buffalo, New York. Wanda. Kirby's watching. Kirby painted with us one week. We should have her back on. Okay. Kirby, contact me. 
Look me in the eyes. Please. <laughs> Come I'm paint with me. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne saying hey. Oh, Heather has hey. a joke. Heather. What's the joke? What's the joke? <clears throat> Pat said she loved the tutorial when we, I was dancing to the music. Good. Oh. Did anybody and appreciate I the bloopers? The, I, I, I liked the, the comment on the bottom that said Sarah had no music. <laughs> I watched that back and I'm like, man, I must have been dancing a oh, long it time. It was a solid three minutes. <laughs> we were even watching it at 1.5 speed and you were still going for like a good 20 seconds. It was like, a, Dang, a right. long time. I just kept on going. Yeah. I just love to dance. I, know, it was a good time. I feel like adults never get the opportunity to dance and it's they a don't. real shame. It is a shame. Shame. Because dancing is so fun, we but it's like normal. only opportunity weddings. How uh, often do you go to weddings? Not that many. I'm going to one on Saturday. Will you Excuse dance me. your heart out <laughs> for me? You better make up some Good. new Good. moves you. while you're there. Good. Uh, There's multitasking being done, dinner and watching. That's a good way to spend the evening. Mm -hmm. Oh, Heather has her joke. Why can Elsa never have balloons? I don't know. Because she'll always let it go. <laughs> Elsa oh. jokes. <laughs> let Elsa it go. Joke. Let it go. Keenan, can you sing that for us? I don't, but, that's oh, all I know. That's all you know? Yeah. Have you even seen the movie? You have two little girls. They don't know about Frozen for a good reason. They don't know about Frozen? Good for you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I hope that's how my household is when I have kids. I just, if they want to do something, I say, let's fight instead. And they say, okay. <laughs> let's fight instead? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Don't pine for me. I'll be back. Marcy, Marcy Clark. <laughs> oh, everybody is so amazing. We've got a bunch of first timers here. I'm so excited. You guys are here. Welcome. We're at, six, we're at 715. Oh, it's time to go? Right now. Dang. Right now? Right now. <laughs> Let's right do now. it. Okay, welcome everybody to Let's Make Art. Thank you so much for being here tonight and painting with us. Tonight we are doing our Wild Trees project. Ooh. Oh. Thank you, thank you. It's a lot of fun, great project. Um, tonight we have Campbell and Jojo painting with us. So welcome, thank you so much. We have Keenan working the cameras. I'm in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Sarah Cray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are using two paintbrushes tonight. We have a round six and a round two. We are using four colors. We have deep blue. I know it says true blue on your step outs. Just ignore that. That was my error. Just ignore the step outs. Just ignore. Every time I make a mistake, if you could just see past that. And I'm sorry. Just assume it's the wrong color. <laughs> just know. <laughs> just know that I'm trying really hard to it's not do that anymore. Green. But true blue, it's, it's all wrong. true blue is the Dr. P.H. Martin equivalent. So if you have Dr. P.H. Martin's, true blue is the color you're going to want to use. Uh, the other colors are rose red, dandelion yellow, and sepia. So those are the four colors. And we have five steps for this project. So the very first step, we are going to do the sky. Second step, we are going to do the first tree line, which you can kind of see through here. Third step, we are going to do the second tree line, this little section here. Fourth step, we're going to do the grassy knoll, which now Keenan knows refers to the JFK assassination. Yes. You learn? I learn Always. something during, yes. Yes, it's, it's That's really when great. I try to learn. <laughs> You'll have to watch the tutorial at regular speed. <laughs> at regular <laughs> speed. All I know is that you were making fun of grassy knoll. That's all I remember. <laughs> well, I said grassy knoll, and I looked at Keenan, and he was like, I love grassy knolls. <laughs> <laughs> and then step five, we have our big trees right here. So this is what we got going on tonight. Um, now, I taped my paper. Sorry, I'll calm down. I taped my paper down the one I'm going to paint on. I just use painter's tape to tape that down because this is going to use a lot of water. And to help with buckling, you tape it down. It's still going to buckle a little bit as you're painting. That's okay, totally normal with this type of paper that we're using. Um, and then let's uh, get started with our warm-ups. 
But first, you guys got to raise your hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm very enthusiastic about having fun. Yep. I'm not painting, so I have to have fun other ways. That's true. Maybe you shouldn't compare like video work. I don't know. Maybe. I never do that because then I just feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to do some warm ups. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my round six. I'm going to dip it in the water and then you want to hit it off the side of your cup so it's not like totally dripping. Because if it's like dripping, then you're going to be making a mess and you're like, yeah. So you hit it off the side of the cup. And the first thing that we are, are going to practice is we're going to practice different values. So we're going to do that two different ways. The first way we're going to do different value chunks. And then the second way we will do a transition. Campbell, is that your warm up paper or your final project paper? Yeah, oh, get your warm up yeah, paper, yeah. Campbell. Good call, Keenan. I noticed that, <laughs> that Jojo had grabbed some extra like, paper oh, and I was I like, oh. I shouldn't use that. <laughs> there you go. Now okay. we're good. Chantelle asked if it was bad to use old paint water. Uh, if that's been sitting at your desk for a while, no, I do it all the time. <laughs> no, old paint water, perfect. That's thirsty. fine. It's fine. I'm thirsty. <laughs> what if that was a joke and I was just like telling her, you can't. I do use old paint water. I yeah, really do. Fine. As long as it's not that dirty that it will affect my painting. Okay. Sorry, focus. So we're going to do our value changes. So I dip my paintbrush. I hit it off the side of the cup. Now I'm going to grab a color. It doesn't matter which one, just any color. And you're going to fill the belly of your paintbrush with paint. And then I want you to make like a rectangle or a heart or whatever shape you want. Okay. So this is our dark value here. And that's how you get darker values or strong strong values in watercolor is you have more paint to water ratio. Yep, and then what you're going to do is you're going to dip your brush a couple of times, hit it off the side of the cup, and just paint with that. This is a medium value. Sarah, do you mind if I adjust that camera a little bit? Oh, go for it. I think it's a skosh blurry. Is it blurry? I think so. Okay, this is your medium value here. So medium value has more equal paint and water ratio, and then you're going to dip again. Hit it off the side of your cup. This is your light value here. And see how far you can go. Just like see how long you can drag that color out. Because the thing in watercolor, if you're not familiar with watercolor, is you're going to be painting like this the entire time. But with watercolor, you want to make sure that you have this range of value because that's how you're going to create depth. And also watercolor is amazing because you can do these really light washes and they do show up and they show like a softness to your work, which I think is really lovely. Now, the other thing that I would like to say is when you're trying to make light values, sometimes you'll get like a lot of water on your paintbrush because you think you need to have a lot of water. Um, so then when you like go to paint, it's like puddling and creating big drips. Don't feel like, basically what I mean is after you get your paintbrush wet, you pick up a tiny bit of paint. So I'm barely touching my paintbrush to the paint and that's how you get a light color. If I want a dark color, then I'm fully putting my paintbrush and soaking up that paint. So that's the difference between the two when you're grabbing those. Okay, so we're gonna do this same thing, except we're gonna do it in a transition. So get your paintbrush wet, hit it off the side of your cup. Grab some paint, whatever color you want. Make your rectangle shape, like so. And if you're left-handed, sorry, you can't, you might wanna start, start on the on opposite side. side, yeah. So Love that. dip your water in. <laughs> I mean, dip your paintbrush in your water, hit it off, and then right where you left off, keep going to the right, go as far as you can go, dip it again, right where you left off, keep on going, and just keep on going until your color is like not a color anymore and it's just water. Now, you can kind of see where I started. There's kind of like harsh lines 
um, which is fine. You can try and go back and like softly blend those out by just kind of working them back and forth. But I do want to warn you that with watercolor, if you work an area back and forth too much, like if I'm working this back and forth, that it will eventually even out and you'll lose your value change. So um, that's just something that tends to happen is you'll just keep working it and it will lose your darker values, which is why I usually only touch the edge when I'm spreading out color. Okay. Now, the, so this is really good to know because as you can see here, like our tree lines, um, like they're lighter values. And then what's in our foreground here, darker values. That's how we can tell that it's close up. So when we're working, like our sky and our farthest tree line is gonna be here, like in this range. And then this second tree line is gonna be more of a mid and then close up we'll have the, the dark. So that's what I'm referring to when we start painting. Okay, the next thing that I want us to practice is different brush strokes that you can get with your brush because we're gonna do a big tree and in order to get the different shapes on this tree, we're gonna have to like really utilize our full brush on our six. So we can actually make some green right now. So to make green, you just mix yellow and blue together if you want more of a warm green, you add more yellow. If you want more of a cool green, you add more blue. If this green is too vibrant for you and you want to tone it down, you can add a little bit of red or a little bit of brown. A red will do the same thing as brown as it will muddy it because they're complementary colors. So. Um, before I go over how to do a tree, the first thing that I want you to do is like take your paintbrush and just like start making like marks. And I know that sounds weird, but I want you to play with like painting, like making marks going one direction, maybe going the opposite direction, kind of like hash marks. Do some small, do some like push down and you'll get a nice thick line. To get a thinner line, you just like use the tip and do a vertical hold. Because when we're doing our trees, we're gonna be using like a light touch and small marks, and we'll also be pressing hard and doing thick marks. We're gonna be doing both. And the reason why I want you to practice doing these different directions is because the actual part of the tree, um, it's going in different directions, right? Like the marks aren't just doing this, going up and down. We have some going this way, we have some going out. And I swear in my drawing class, we literally spent the first five minutes scribbling, like seriously, because it just gets you used to um, making straight and curved lines. It gets you used to moving your wrist. It gets you used to holding your pencil or your paintbrush. Like what you do when your pen's out of ink and you just... Yeah, kind of <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna practice trees before we get started. Actually, do you know what? Let's do that halfway through because there's a lot of drying time. So we can do that while we're waiting for a layer to dry. Okay? Dance. <laughs> well, we can always dance. <laughs> but Keenan's gonna have to sing. Uh, okay. <laughs> Which song? Let it go. Let it go. No, she I mean, just I said it. I would have to Google it. <laughs> okay. So now um, I'm going to switch to my other cup because our first layer is going to be really, really light. And the blue in my cup water would actually affect my sky. It would turn it kind of green. So I'm going to switch to my cleaner water. And our very first step is we are going to do this sky. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the sepia and a little bit of the yellow and add a lot of water to it so it's soft, like a light wash. I 
And I'm gonna add a little bit more brown to it because if, it, if you're using mostly yellow and not enough brown, then it's gonna come off really um, bright. And I'm trying to do more of like a tan color. Okay. Like a khaki color. Tamara says that Keenan has to do the bend and snap <laughs> while we dance. <laughs> That's a dance move that I am familiar with. <laughs> okay, so I'm just using a really soft, I guess when I say soft, I mean light. So just a really light wash. I'm gonna start putting in my sky. So, and this is where you're kind of gonna make those funky marks that we did in the warm up. So you're just gonna kind of like, just start. So I'm just using, doing like kind of crisscrosses like this. And then I'm going to just dip my paintbrush in the water and use water to spread out this color. And I'm lifting up my brush. I'm not just doing it straight down across because I want there to be some value change. So by lifting up your brush, it's allowing for some white spaces. And that's what we want. This is kind of like a it kind of reminds me of like a smoky sky. And in California, there's a lot of fires where I'm from. So. And the grassy knoll isn't looking very green and healthy. So yeah, it, it's like dry nearby. summer. Yeah. And there have been hazy skies there. Maybe I should say foggy. I'm not trying yeah. to make it light of the fire. It's a serious thing. It is a serious thing, but. I, I didn't mean that for it, it to be. It is more of a smoky color. Yeah, rather that's than what fog. it reminds me yeah. of. Okay, so you're going to do this probably like halfway down your painting. Or do you know when the sun is setting and it casts like a gold hue yeah. on everything? Golden hour? Yeah. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of this too. Very nice. Good job, you guys. That looks really good. And this is one of my favorite, like laying down color like this and then using just water to help spread it out. This is why I just think watercolor is so amazing because you're using water like it's a paint medium and it does so much work for you for like nothing. It's just like water that you're grabbing, you know? It's really great. Oh, oh noises I know. <laughs> Actually, I just posted, I think yesterday I posted a little video of painting a tree close up. And if you had the sound on, you could hear the brush scratching on the paper. Oh, and like it was that. oddly satisfying. It's ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine said she's tuning in late. She can't find um, her true, oh. Catherine, you're going to want deep blue. Sorry, I already, I mentioned that earlier. Went over that. It's going to say true blue on this step out. I obvious, obviously mean deep blue. Keenan knows. That was my bad. But we, we will fix it for future. Future reference. Future reference. Happened? I have never more than twice read the step out sheets, so I wouldn't have known. <laughs> I only read four of the mistakes. Keenan <laughs> reads through every single one, and so if there is a mistake that hasn't been caught, it's Keenan's fault. <laughs> it's on my to-do list. You have three more chances before you're fired. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so mine's halfway. Now we just like wait a second for it to dry. So while it's dry drying, I'm gonna show how to do small trees. So if you wanna grab your warm up paper to do this with me, you're welcome to, or you could just watch. So for my small trees, I'm gonna get a new sheet so it's not distracting. I'm gonna actually use my round two. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Smaller brushes are easier for smaller spaces. Larger brushes are easier for larger spaces. Now, 
Oh, really quick. Um, Janet said, is there a reason why you don't use an eight brush for such a large area? If you have a round eight or a round 10 or a round 12 or a round 16, you are more than welcome to use it. It's much easier to use larger brushes for larger spaces. I just try and keep it simple for you guys and not switch brushes around too much so you don't have to buy like six brushes. So I paint everything with the round six and a round two, but if you have larger rounds, please use them. They're very helpful. Okay, so for my trees, if we're gonna do it small, and you can do this in any color because it's just a warm up. What I like to do is I like to do my trunk first. So to get a thin line, I am going to do just a vertical line up and down. So I'm holding my brush really, what? They're talking about brush names. Oh yeah. On YouTube. Uh -huh. And Marty Lynch says, my brush's name is, I hope this isn't terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh out loud so hard, but I like that. That's a that. good one. That's a good one. Actually, Keenan, why don't you switch to our new... Angle? Our new angle. You guys, we got a new close-up angle just for you. I'm all for it. <laughs> And then let me see, tell me if I need to move my paper. Right now it looks okay. Here's switched. Oh, audio's all messed up on this one. Let's fix that here. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. I switched back on accident. I apologize. Keenan, get it together. I'm just a hot mess. <laughs> strike two. Oh, that's great. Oh. Isn't that great? That is. Wow. is that I, I hope you guys enjoy that. Fun? We got a special. Is that this one? Yeah. It's called a C stand. Can I like? Not a Z stand. Not a. Not a you have to get there to. A C stand. Did you Did you see it? So much Sarah face. <laughs> oh, you'll okay. see it right there. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we're gonna uh, just watch for a second. Oh, that was. <laughs> you missed it. You, you. It already came and went. Did it really? I think so. Oh, oh darn. No. Oh, there it is. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Focus, you guys. That's I'm just the having paralysis demon that I have in the corner of my room. At night. <laughs> oh, is it focused, though? <laughs> it looks focused. Okay, great. So, anyways, sorry. I have the trunk of my tree. Now, the things that you first of all, there's so many different types of trees. So, like, you can paint whatever type of tree you want. But I'm imagining like a. Fir trees, mm -hmm. is that what these are? Christmas trees. Christmas trees is their technical term, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Is it really? No. Yeah. <laughs> On this show it is. On this show it's called the <laughs> Christmas tree. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that's really <laughs> Okay. So, at the top I'm going to do little dashes, like going across. Okay, so there's the top of my tree because trees narrow to the top. So they're wide on the bottom, they narrow in at the top. And then there's a couple different ways that you can do this to help you. You can do like horizontal lines like this across like that and that will help you to get the shape of your tree. So that's an option. And after you create these horizontal lines, then you're going to do your dash marks across those horizontal lines. And then um, you'll see though, if you keep on going this way, you have these big chunks of space in between your branch sections. And also when I'm doing my like m dash marks on across these horizontal lines, I'm kind of doing hash marks. So I do them in one direction and then I'll do them in the opposite direction right on top. So it gives me that feel of them kind of like overlaying over like just things layered on top of each other. And then what I like to do is I will actually do some dash marks to kind of connect these pieces towards each other. Like so. And you don't like, this is a pretty extreme shape, pretty wide. You, they don't have to be that wide. You can switch it up. Now, another way that you can do trees, and there's so many different brush marks that you can make. Um, if I were to do another tree, and we're just going to practice this a couple of times. So if I'm just doing another tree, 
and you don't want to do those horizontal marks, you can just do dashes. So um, I'll start at the top, do some small dashes because that's where it's narrowest, give them some space in between, and then I'll start to go out a little bit, go back in the middle, go out a little bit, and these are more all the same size dashes. So they're kind of like dots, but I'm kind of using more the side of my brush so it's not a perfect circle. And let them overlap with each other, run into each other. And then as you get down the tree, you're gonna wanna press a little bit harder on your brush to get a thicker dash mark. That one got a little crazy. Look at that. That's okay. He's having a party. He's, you know what? He's just reaching out for his friend. That Do you was, know? What? That was really cute. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that trees are really amazing though? Like they actually help each other and give each other nutrients. And There's a really cool picture that I keep seeing on my social media feeds. It's like a bunch of trees, like somewhere like in South Africa or something and they all like avoid each other. It's really weird. They're like, it's like you, it's super like a up through the treetops, and they're like spaces along all like the. It's really cool looking, actually. I wish that my husband was here because he was telling me all about trees and how they help each other, and he gave me some really cool facts, and I can't remember right. any of them. <laughs> Michael, I'm sorry I let you down. I wish you were here. Okay, we so have a segment tree facts with Michael. We should have a segment. We should just have a segment called Facts with Michael. I love that idea. That is a That's genius really, idea. I love yes. He knows facts about everything. I want to be the video guy for hanging out with Michael for hours on end about learning okay. about facts. What if we release a little like 45 second clip before each project where he just recites facts about, about the what project? we're painting? Do it. That'd be so fun. Because people loved when he was on the octopus and was telling all those facts. I know. They're awesome facts. Okay. Side note, Marcy Clark says, this is my new favorite camera angle. Yes. We could even get closer, can't we? Can't we like go closer? <laughs> <laughs> the more you say closer, <laughs> I feel like we can. <laughs> okay, so when we are doing this tree line that we're about to do, and we're gonna do it twice, so this is good to know. We're gonna essentially be doing a bunch of tree tops using light values, and when you're doing trees, your brain is going to tell you that they need to be evenly spaced because your brain really loves patterns and they love to create patterns even when you don't want to create patterns. So when you're doing your tree line, don't have them evenly spaced um, or at least like if you notice that they're starting to be evenly spaced, put one like closer to the side of one so they're not evenly spaced anymore and break it up because that's how trees grow. They don't grow totally evenly spaced from each other, so. No. <laughs> Not facts. in this world. <laughs> okay, so um, if you wanna practice this using a lighter value, since that's gonna be our first round, you are more than welcome to, but essentially um, just have them kind of run into each other. You can have bigger spaces in between, but just kind of play with, play with that. And again, we're mostly just doing the tops of the trees, and then um, the bottoms of them are gonna be like covered by our second tree line, so. Okay. Let's get going. Court says she thinks her background is too dark. That's okay, Court, you can lighten, actually. You can lift color. Do you want me to show you how to do that really quick? Yes, please. Okay. So let's say if your background is this dark and you want to lift color, you can either take, you're going to want to get the area wet, so just put water on top of it, okay? Re-wet the area. And then you can just take your paintbrush and lift up the color and wipe it on your paper towel. Or if you just want to use your paper towel, you can pick up the color. Dab away. Just dab away. Dab or, away all your problems. <laughs> That's all you got to do. <laughs> or you can just adjust your painting to that value. So if they're dark, then just have just have a really dark painting. It's your painting. You can do that if you want to. Oh, I'm not bad about it either. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to do our first tree line. This is going to 
uh, be a little over halfway, so it's kind of, don't paint right where, your, right where your sky ended, paint on top of your sky. And I had mine go like at an angle up a little bit. If you want to use your round two for this, you can. If you want to use your round six, you can. The gorgeous thing about rounds is you can get a nice little fine line with that. Also, they always narrow in at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit. It's gonna be a similar color, but I'm gonna add a tiny bit of green in there. So it's like, it's still brown, but it has hints of green. Okay, so and make sure you're adding just that it's a really light color. And then just go ahead and start making your tree line. So if you want to start with putting your lines. lines in first, you can if you just want to go for it and start doing dashes like tree marks. I mean, the little tree tops, you can. If you want to do it both ways, like there's no wrong way to do it. Just do what feels right for you. I do just love that new camera angle. Isn't it good? It is. Are you on that I, camera I, I angle again? I just switched back because it looks better. Is the butcher the palette in the way? The palette is not in the way, but you also can't see the colors you're mixing. So I'll okay. switch back when we uh, start mixing those colors. Okay. Can you do the picture in picture of the palette? Yeah, I can. Can you switch that? Yeah. And also maybe it's an area where like it kind of goes back down. Maybe all the trees are in line to where it's kind of more of a smooth line, which happens too. Very nice. Very nice. Yep. 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 And pick up your brush a little bit more to give a little bit more white space. See how there's not a lot of white space in there? But it's looking good. Those are some thick trees, my boy. He loves thick trees, and thick there's nothing wrong with that. He's told me personally. Thick he trees wrote me a note, favorite. actually, Did and he? said, thick trees are my favorite. Interesting. I, <laughs> I don't think it's a competition. It's just how <laughs> either of you are told. <laughs> first thing you got to know about me, I'm extremely competitive. <laughs> are you? That's not the first thing. <laughs> Listen, I used to play soccer, okay? Did and you? I did. And I did, and I was... We occasionally yeah. still play soccer. We still play as soccer. As a Let's Make Art crew. Really? We also invite we others to play with us. <laughs> we also invite Can others. Play soccer with you guys? Yes. yes. We're always looking for people to play. Always. But I feel like I've been better. I've gotten better about my competitiveness, I think. I thought you were going to say about soccer. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten better at soccer. No, I definitely was better <laughs> 10 years ago when I was playing. Oh. My bad. Okay, so even though I told you guys watch the spacing on your trees, look at what I'm doing. They're different heights, but they are totally evenly spaced. So if you if you catch yourself doing that, just go in there and like add an extra little tree to mix it up and throw off that mix it off again. that line. You know that it's the best of both. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Hannah Montana. Yeah, you even did the Hannah Montana laugh afterwards <laughs> on purpose. Perfectly timed. Mm -hmm. I had a little sister who watched it. Really? Yeah. Her name's Hannah. That's perfect. I know. That's why it was her favorite show. Understandably so. Tamara asks if we can redo all the purple flowers with this new angle. Mm. All the purple flowers was our very first project. And I will have to say that it's actually a really difficult project. Mm -hmm. And it was my first time. There's not even a trace, is there? No, there's no trace. I was just like, I could totally teach people to paint this. It's like eight different flowers. Oh, I keep dear. seeing it and I keep wanting to paint it, but I'm We like, really I'm should. Paint. And also the overhead camera, because it was our first tutorial, it was upside down <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> but at, we have improved so much. Yeah. Look at how much better we are. We should redo, <laughs> Tamara could, we should redo that one because it is upside down. That'd actually be pretty fun, a reboot Yeah, week. that would be fun, reboot week. Oh my gosh, I should redo that project entirely 
for the subscription box. <gasps> That'd be cool. A throwback? A throwback. That'd be awesome. What's a good month for throwbacks? Is there a month that's known for throwbacks? Uh, August. <laughs> if anything, I feel like it would be like a, a month you graduate. School, so maybe? May. So May? June? When is that when people graduate? May? <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be May. <laughs> it's gonna be May. Oh, that's a good idea. What? Uh, Kim Alloway, Alloway? I can't pronounce that properly. Says, I would love reboots and do one a month. Now that's asking a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Just kidding. What? Yeah, now I'm on Sarah's side. Now, I will right. switch that's side. too much, too far. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That is a good idea. Especially because, like, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but uh, we didn't always do a pre-recorded tutorial. What we would do is we would just do, like, a five-minute preview and then just do the live. And we didn't start doing the pre-recorded, I think, until the giraffe. So we probably have like 15 projects that don't have a pre-recorded tutorial. They're just the five minute time lapse. And so we actually need to go back in there and do pre-recorded tutorials for those. Well, that sounds pretty cool then. Gosh dang it, all my trees are evenly spaced. Those look so good. That looks really nice. Thank you. Good job, yes, look at that space you're putting in there now. Good job, Campbell. Your thick trees are looking nice. Okay. So I'm kind of going in and I'm messing up my tree line a little bit because it's just too, Evenly. too spaced, perfect. too well, too perfectly spaced. I feel like I said that like 12 times. 13. So 13. <laughs> I've been counting. Keenan's got a tally back there. Yeah. He's counting. I have a tally of how many times we've been fired and how many times you've said whatever you just said. Perfectly <laughs> <laughs> now you know I'm lying. <laughs> have you really been keeping a tally of how many times you've been fired? No, once it passed 25, I just had to like give up. That's all you guys have seen. Quote, I, I fire Brock. Keenan pretty regularly, <laughs> yes. not on Cameron. Camera. And to quote Brock, I haven't gotten, I haven't been paid since March. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you guys, this is step two, and you're doing great. So good. Um, we have to wait for it to dry before we do the second step. And Campbell, you're doing great. Just keep on going. Keep going at it. Make I'm sorry. Trees, boy. I'm sorry that I paint a little bit faster, so I'll just give you guys a little bit of time. Can't do check-ins. No. Unless we had our, uh, no, we don't have that, so I shouldn't even say it. Next time we can do check-ins. Maybe we'll invest in another camera. Then we can have all kinds of check-ins. Oh, maybe I'll go over um, like a fogginess oh, yeah. thing. While also, we're... the other reason we can't do a check-in is because there's papers taped to the table. Oh, that's why I thought we couldn't do a check-in. Because we have the overhead cam. I don't, I don't think that would be good to move it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying like I would just move their paper to mine. Normally. But because they're, they're taped down, yes. we can't. That's, we were saying the same thing. But... Were we? <laughs> <laughs> Just have everyone who's watching imagine that. Yeah, they look the same. They, they look the same. Okay, so if you want to give your trees like a foggy feel, it's all about if you're trying to paint fog in like a tree area, then the fog itself would be covering the tree. And so your tree would change value to account for that. So. What you can do is using a light value, you'll do some trees. Okay, so oh, maybe I'll start with my trunk. So here's some trees. Could you go over real quick again how to get a really dark green? So if you want a really dark green, you just wanna make sure you're gonna be using a lot of paint. So I'm gonna grab a big swoop of yellow and drag it to the middle. I'm gonna grab a big swoop of blue. And then I'm gonna fill my paintbrush with that color 
and then you can get a really dark green. So it's just making sure you're using a lot of that paint. Okay. So if you want it to seem like your, your trees are fading in and out of fog, so you're going to do some light values and then you're going to kind of just use water to kind of like blend a little bit out. And then once that dries, you're just going to be doing darker on top. So you're just going to switch the values. And then once that dries, then whatever parts you want, if you want the tip of your tree sticking out, then you'll, you'll have that be darker. So this like really light value that like wash it it's it gives it the feel of fog over on top of those trees and so you can do and another way that you can do it is you could actually just get the area wet with clean water probably not this green water but get it wet and then once you start putting in trees it's going to spread out and make it really fuzzy but that's okay because that's kind of what fog does anyway is it it alters how we see it and it lightens it and then same thing, you would just keep on layering the dark values. But you would wanna wait for it to dry in between so they would stay a little bit sharper. Okay. So we have our first tree line. We are gonna move on to our third step which is our second tree line. This one is going to be a slightly darker value and I'm gonna add a little bit more green into the mix. So, Keenan, do you know why we're having the values darken as, they, as we come forward? Do you know what that term is called? Atmospheric perspective. Yes! I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Those are the biggest words I've ever heard come out of your mouth. <laughs> They're the biggest words I've ever said. <laughs> So I'm still using that same mixture. I'm just gonna include a little bit more green. So you just wanna make sure it's a darker value. And I'm gonna do the trees and then I'm going to use just water to spread it out, similar to what I just showed you to kind of give it the illusion that it's fading into nothing and fog is heavily in the area. Now, just to give you a warning, um, if you paint your trees first and then you blend them out, you're going to get this hard line. That's what this is. It's called a watercolor bloom. It is totally normal and natural and it's wonderful. So please embrace it. If you don't like that and you don't want these hard lines, then just blend it out tree by tree while it's still wet. Um, but also know if the if the trees overlap, then that will also create a bloom. A blooms essentially happen when there's different drying times. So, yeah, um, but usually if you use like 100% cotton paper um, and a heavier weight paper, something similar to arches, then um, it, it doesn't do blooms as easy as Canson. But I like the blooms, so that's why I also like Canson. The blooms are fantastic and they're unique and yeah. don't stop them. Yeah, never stop them. Okay, so let's get going here so this second tree line if you can see i kind of had it like start low and then i wanted it to overlap because i didn't want to mimic the same exact tree line on both of them so i kind of had it go it started down then it went up and then it went back down so kind of opposite of what i just painted um, you can have it mimic or not mimic you can do a third row of trees you can do whatever you want because this is your painting so have fun with it. Go crazy. Because it's just a piece of paper, you know? <laughs> so start with your branches or your um, trunks and then start putting in your trees. I actually really would love that ASMR, a paintbrush ASMR. Just watch Bob Ross. Now that I'm thinking about it. It does sound pretty cool. It does. It does. 
and then I'm going to use, so if I wanted to do a couple of trees and then blend it out right now, I can't. So I did a couple trees and then I'm just going to use the color that's already there and kind of spread it, spread it down. And the fun thing about if you were to do it chunk by chunk is this area is still wet and when I go in to put in my second tree, it's gonna blend with that water that's already there, which I think oh. is pretty cool. But again, you guys get to decide this. And also, some trees are really sparse looking too, so don't feel like they all need to be super full. Like, don't be mad at your trees because there's so many different types of trees in so many different shapes and it's gotta exist somewhere. So like, just be nice to them and yourself. Keenan, this camera angle is so awesome. This was your idea. <laughs> I'm so smart. You really are. <laughs> <laughs> this was your idea. <laughs> I just made it come to fruition. You also, did. Also, the and C I stand, that. I just want everyone to know it was back ordered by like weeks. Yeah, we ordered this so long ago. Like the beginning of April. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. And of oh course goodness. it was on back order. Yeah. It's like our life. It's like everything else. <laughs> like everything else we try and get. <laughs> uh, and even what you can do while it's wet, if you want to like drop in a little bit, just to give it that sense of like fog kind of going in and out. So maybe it's only covering parts of the trees and then they kind of peek back out. You can do that. It's up to you. It's your painting. And it's only a piece of paper, so don't be afraid to try it. You know what I mean? The worst thing that's going to happen is you will throw this in the trash. Like, that's it. That's the worst thing. But also to keep in mind, one man's trash is, not, is another man's treasure. That so is someone true. else could really love your painting. You know what? That's really actually true. Also, someone came in the other day and offered to buy your warm-up sheet. Yeah, this so lady really liked it. You never know what someone's going to love. We just did a little warm-up sheet. She loved it. Absolutely. She asked if she could have it, and I was just like, please. That's $300. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> now, as you um, get over to the right hand side, you can have it go all the way across. Um, or if you want to stop with like an inch and a half or two inches to go, you can because we are going to put a big tree here. The reason why it's sometimes good just to keep on going is because you can see that there are parts of the tree that we are seeing through. So um, if you leave that place space totally bare, then that's really obvious, right? So sometimes it's good just to go all the way or go a little bit more than you think you might need just to cover those little spaces. I don't remember if you mentioned or not. What's up? Um, it's always good on the, when you tape it down, it's always great to go all the way to the edge when you do your wash. Did you say that? Oh, I didn't say that. Keenan, thank you for your... So I just, I just was thinking, reminding. I was like... Yeah. It, was, it always looks so satisfying when you take a tape off. It really is. Beautiful. I, I like thick trees. You like thick trees? Great. I do thick too. Thick boys. They they look... Some thick boys. What? Some they some boys. thick boys. <laughs> oh, some I, thick trees. I didn't like, hear the yeah, beginning like part. <laughs> Thick boys. Okay, I get it. I get it. I'm on the same page with you now. <laughs> <laughs> Again, my trees are being too spaced, so I'm going to throw an extra one in there. And you can have like a random tall tree too. Like also play with these heights of the trees, right? If they're all similar heights, then that's going to create a strong 
horizontal line and we don't want that either because that is distracting to the viewer's eye. I got a bloom. Look how pretty it is. <gasps> I love that. I know I got one right there and I'm so happy oh. with it. I'm not trying to one-up you, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? I did say I was competitive. I gave you fair warning. <laughs> no, I'm just she kidding. She really just said, I've been better about my competitiveness. <laughs> not even 10 That was a lie. It varies from like every five minutes. It <laughs> just depends on the mood I'm yeah. in. <laughs> Judy has a question about mm -hmm. tape. Yeah. Uh, my paint always bleeds under the tape. Why? Um, one thing that you can try and do is after you tape it, you press down along the edge to make sure that the tape actually adheres to the paper, um, on, like that really strong edge. Um, I will say that I have had paint bleed underneath my tape. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I will actually do more research into that, Judy, because I just painted a July, our July project. Well, when I painted the July project, I had it taped off and it did bleed under a little bit and I even made sure that it was taped down really well. So I'll, I'll uh, research that, Judy, and I'll let you know. The age of the tape might have something to do with it too. Age of the tape, I'm wondering if it has to do how much paint and water could be on the edge. I've never run into that before, but I'm wondering if, uh, I don't know. Let me look into it. Age of the Age tape. Age of the tape. Keenan, do it in a do it in a do it in a voice. What should I say? Age uh, of the tape. Age of the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. That if amazing. anybody's in radio or voiceover movies, Keenan's talented. <laughs> I promised him that I would use my power to get him jobs. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> how do you know when a tree doesn't know the answer to something? Uh, I do not know. It shrubs. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so amazing with your jokes. <sighs> the amount of power it took me not to get up and walk away. <laughs> in a good way or a bad in a, way? In a good way. Good. No, a good way. I love puns. If you're not interested in puns, this is, then this is the wrong this show. Is not the wrong place for you. <laughs> Just watch us on mute. <laughs> okay, and then so I did my tree line and now I'm going to just use water and the color that is there to spread this out and transition out. I'm lifting up my brushes to allow for some white space in there. And again, when it's wet, if you want to go in when it's wet and do a little bit of like dot, dot, dots in there to put in some hints of like tree, as in it's going, the fog is going in and out, you can. If you don't and you just want to smooth like, or kind of not a smooth line, but just more about the wash. You can do that. This is your painting. And you can do lots of layers of these. Um, I, I kept it a little bit more simple um, because you do have to let these layers dry. Um, but if you wanted to do three or four or however many, feel free to do that. It's your painting. Um, just remember to you know, kind of darken up the value a little bit each new layer. It's fairly easy to adjust that camera, it turns out. Oh, good. I haven't switched, but you know, it's going to be great still. <laughs> so you haven't actually adjusted it? <laughs> no, I adjusted it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought that's what you were saying. Okay. So that is step three. 
I'm going to talk slow in case you're not there yet. Thank you. I had to do it visual. So. I really appreciate that. Step three. Maybe I should do that every time. <laughs> oh, magic hands. <laughs> uh, very nice, very nice. I've got some more blooms in there. Yeah, and if you want extra, extra blooms in there, just do some water drops while it's still wet. Have fun with it. Man, I'm sorry. I'm t <laughs> that was another one up. Man, Jojo, I'm really sorry. I wasn't going to say anything. But <laughs> I heard Keenan like, <laughs> smile, <laughs> and I was just like, gosh, dang it. <laughs> I said I would be better. Okay, Campbell's my brother. I'm used to it all the time. <laughs> He's just nodding. He's like, yep, pretty much. Am I supposed to yell questions if they're in all caps? Yes. <clears throat> no. Please don't. Maybe just speak loudly. Yeah, just like spike. Yelling is... <laughs> what? what? Do you ever use a hair dryer to speed up drying time? Uh, I have before. What works better is a heat gun, actually. Um, he, doesn't blow the thing. Yeah, yeah, because blow dryers have a force behind them, so they could actually like change the direction of your painting. Like this is really wet; it's kind of a pool. If I were to put a hair dryer on that, it would kind of like spray. So um, heat guns are really nice because there's actually no like pressure behind them; it's just um, temperature, so it will dry faster. Um, but yes, I have used a hair dryer before when I needed to, and it worked out fine. So. Feel free to give it a whirl. I remember like forever ago when those those crayon rainbow art, melting crayon rainbow. Oh things yeah, yeah, were, like, yeah. A big thing. I did a few yeah. of those. They're kind of fun. Yeah. Actually. That I sounds really, great. I, I, like I put a canvas underneath it so all the paint like splattered onto the canvas. Mm, really cool. That's cool. Somebody asked somebody asked another question in caps. What are the brushes called that are double ended? I don't know. Dual, dual brush, brush. <laughs> like the Tombow brush pan, oh, or is it a is that what their actual brush might be? I did see some comments where people thought that I used double-ended paint brushes, and I don't, so I don't know. You have like a thick side on one end and a thin on the other. You're like, <laughs> I'm just like flipping it back and forth. <laughs> I'm like, do it like this. Okay, so. Now we are going to do our grassy knoll area. So, for this one, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading comments. Um, now for this grassy knoll, where I'm gonna get a really dark uh, brown. So I'm gonna grab a, oh, my red ran into my brown, but that's okay because I was going to do that anyway. And I'm going to put in some yellow to give it a really strong gold the color. Paint, the paint was way ahead of you. The paint knew what I wanted it yeah. to do, and it did it. That's when you know. That's how spiritually <laughs> you are. <laughs> so, um, after I mix this gold color, I'm going to put in my grassy area. I did give an angle to it, so it's not a straight horizontal line. It kind of angles up, similar to how these are going a little bit. And... Um, so you're going to kind of do a similar thing that you did in the, the, uh, sky. So I'm going to start putting in some brush strokes here and you can do them all different directions like so. Because this is going to give the feel of like that dry grass. And if you're from California, you know exactly what I'm talking about here in Missouri. You don't really, sorry. Maybe like the beginning of spring. Not this year. Yeah, it's, Beginning of spring, yes, but if there's like no rain in the summertime and it's 100 degrees mm -hmm. six weeks straight, then yeah, we've seen some dead grass. This is how it is in spring in California. Sometimes. So. We just don't have as brown grassy knolls as California does. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and then after I put in this color, I'm going to take a little bit of water and kind of like move the color around. I'm still lifting up my brushes because I still want some white spaces. And then another thing I like to do is when this is nice and wet is I'll just grab some strong color and just like drop it in there. Also do some water drops on top of that and just get some really cool value and texture changes. So like have fun with it.
yeah. And then I, I would have yours probably go to like here. Yep. So you're just gonna like drop in some strong, and then if you just wanna let it kind of dry and disperse on its own, you can. You can always do water droplets on top to help it move and also to create those cool um, bloom textures. And then what I like to do is I just use that, did that using my round six. I can switch to my round two, pick up some paint and do some like scraggly grasses like so those long like weed like thing oh that one that one got a little bit crazy but a, that's okay that one got away long. from me <laughs> so we got thick boys and now we have long boys yes all right we got all different kinds but that that weed has to exist in that length somewhere it does so i'm not mad And then after your like grassy, maybe I should just say weedy, weed weed area, uh, no. Um, after that dries, you can do some smaller grass textures after it dries. If you try and do it right now. <laughs> if, you not to be <laughs> if you try and do it right now and it's wet, it will, that line will just kind of bleed and blend out. So um, just wait till it dries if you want those detailed areas. Also look at this right there because that looks so cool. Keenan, can you make a noise to show that you're impressed by that that I just showed you? Do you are you talking about the bloom? Yeah, I'm talking about that right there. The texture of that bloom. <laughs> oh, am goodness. <laughs> oh, am goodness. Oh, my lanta. Okay. So, this is our grassy area. Great job, you guys. Love it. Ooh, well, there's some great textures in there, Campbell. I love that. Good job. I actually have my glasses on. So I Campbell can has said nary a word this whole time. He is in the zone. <laughs> I can feel it. He's like, I'm painting right now, so can you please leave me alone? <laughs> okay, Chad is watching. Chad, Chad really? we miss you. <sighs> we just ate at Joe Jumps. We were thinking about you the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> okay. We're gonna let this dry and we are going to do our big tree. Now, let me pull out my handy dandy scratch page for the big tree. It's essentially the same concept. You're just gonna be using your round six. So I'm gonna start off with the tree trunk color, which is gonna be brown. So I'm gonna do my tree trunk and tree trunks get a little bit narrow at the top so to get a thick line you're going to press down and if you want to like do two lines you totally can you don't have to do it in one stroke but if you press down hard you're going to get a thick line and then as you get near the top you're going to like lightly lift up your brush and then you'll eventually just get like more of the tip so that's how you can get a trunk and then i like to make one side a little bit darker so um just to give, it's just, it's just to give like just a hint of um, its three dimensionality. So usually I'll darken a side or you can just leave it the same, it doesn't matter. Um, but just by adding that darker value on the edge makes it feel like um, it's actually round and has form. And then to do, let me get some more yellow here because I mixed it all into brown. So mix your green. And it's the same thing. You're gonna be doing little kind of hash marks at the top for the smaller areas. And then as you get down to the branches, you're gonna do thicker brush strokes. Now the biggest thing is you wanna to remember to lift up your brush and then you'll notice that my brush strokes are kind of coming out 
angled to the right, and then on the left hand side they're angled to the left. And then you're just going to keep making your way down. I like to do it kind of like section by section. And then I kind of like do some dashes in between or some marks in between to kind of connect them. And remember to paint over your tree trunk. What? Nothing. Chad texted me. <laughs> a very loving text. Ah, oh, Chad. Also, Laura, uh, who had the all caps question about the hair dryer. Yeah. She said, LOL, you don't have to yell. Other tutorials request caps for questions. And then she oh. said, in all caps, <laughs> where is your studio located? <laughs> well, that's actually a really great idea. Caps for questions so you know what to look for. To differentiate? That is a good idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. Oh, uh, and Marcy says, don't rewrite history. It's a grassy knoll. <laughs> so you can't change the name of our weed hill and or dead grass hill. You're it's right. It's grassy knoll. It's grassy knoll and it will forever now be known grassy knoll. You're right. Also, um, when you're doing your trees, it's okay to do these dash marks, like do these marks using water and then you can also drop in the green too and kind of spread it around because it's kind of good to get different values in there also. So like, like I feel like this part of my tree is more interesting than what's going on up here because I have light and dark values. So, um, and if you want to lift out color, you absolutely can. Just get the area wet and use your paintbrush and lift. That tree is almost too big for the lens. Is it? Yeah, it's okay. It's a big boy. It's a learning experience. And then when you get to that, because we're using larger our larger brush since we're doing a larger tree you can actually after you make your marks you can get your round two and do smaller marks off some of these edges because the needles or the leaves themselves are small but when they're bunched up together that's why we do the large marks but on the silhouette on some of them you would still see a hint or a little detail of the little pieces of the individuals. So it's okay to, to kind of go through with your little round two and put some of those in there. Gosh, I love my brown kind of bled into my green right here and it's a gorgeous really color. I love that. Uh, I used red in the tree trunk color. That's where that's coming from and I'm loving it. So, that's how we're doing our trees. Okay? Cool, yeah. All right, let's go for it. I think it's time. We're on to our last step. We're doing our big tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually get more blue. So I'm going to use, I'm going to do my tree trunk first. So I'm going to grab some brown. And you can have it go as high as you want. So I'm going to kind of start right here. And if you're if it's not a perfectly straight up and down line, that's okay. Trees grow slight slightly angled all the time. So like don't stress about that. Cuz it might be hard if your paper is warping a lot, it might be really hard to get a super straight line. So And then I'm going to go back in and do another like thicken it up just a little bit. We like them thick trees. Just like that. And then if you want to darken one side. Mine kind of looks like a Harry Potter wand. It does <laughs> look like a Harry Potter it. wand. What Harry Potter house are you? I'm a Hufflepuff. Oh my gosh, me too. Campbell? Slytherin. I didn't even need to ask. I knew that. Why? Well, um, you're Hufflepuff. Are you sure about that? Or... I 
was going to say Ravenclaw. Oh, I don't know about Ravenclaw. Ravenclaws are smart. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Whoa. Campbell yeah. needs to leave. <laughs> wow. No, Ravenclaws are studious. They and know. That is why I am not a Ravenclaw that because is studying not a... is not my thing. Okay, we are going to do our uh, the leaves part. Which part? Our uh, the... <laughs> the leaves, the green. The green. The green part is what I'm trying to say. By leaves, we're gonna do green. <laughs> Pine needles, is that uh, right? <laughs> what do fir trees have? Listen, we've been over this before. Uh, this exact type of tree we've seen. Why do oh, I keep putting leaves? myself in this situation? Why don't I just look it up? Listen, the plants that are here are dead. <laughs> we don't need to know the name of the leaves of trees. It's true, I'm not very good at keeping things alive. Okay. Is that why the plants in the fake in the office up there are fake? Uh-huh. We're not allowed. I stole my husband's plant for the store opening last year. It was and a dark day. Can I still open yeah, he was so mad at me. And I understand because I can't keep things alive. All right, sorry. So we're going to start off doing our small kind of hash marks here. And then we are going to start branching out. <laughs> <laughs> needles! Thank you! They're needles. Needles are what you use to sew things. I don't think that's There's right. There's tree needles, Keenan. Pine you needles. You stop it. <laughs> Pine <laughs> Tree needles. <laughs> it's the same thing. Okay. Now, the one thing that I will warn you of is your brain is going to be like, they all have this swoop texture and go out. This is what your brain is going to tell you to do, okay? And I'm going to challenge you to not do that mm -hmm. and mix it up a little bit. Just don't. The brain is tricking you. It's, don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. So, like, you can start off doing that, but then go in and do some, like, horizontal to mix up that perfectly textured patterned line. But also that gives you the opportunity to... Not the, using the non-swoop method gives you the opportunity to spread it out a little wider, depending on how yeah. thick your tree trunk is. Yeah. Do you guys want to hear a great story about Kanan where I was so proud of him? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say yes. <laughs> so we were looking at, I was asking him what angle of a bird we should paint. And um, there was one where the beak was kind of foreshortened, so it was um, not a total um, side view. It kind of was facing forward, which foreshortened the beak. And I'm like, I don't know, that might be a little bit hard to communicate. And Kenan's like, no, you just have to change up the value and make sure that there's a highlight on that beak. And I was just like, Kenan? And I'm like, You're, you can see that and you can tell that. That's so, I was learning. like, I, I was so, so proud of him. smart. Thank you. Ravenclaw. <laughs> because well, because that's it, and I, I've been, um, I've been reading this, this book by um, Ed Catmull, who was the, uh, who started Pixar, and he was talking about art, and I remember learning this in my art classes, which is like, your brain likes to jump to conclusions of how things look, which is why it's really hard to draw sometimes, and a lot of what art is is actually just trying to paint what you see and not what your brain tells you you see. And so, like, um, I just told Keenan, I was just like, Keenan, you're learning how to see and look for those things. I'm like, that's what it's all about. You're not, you don't even have to paint. I really was so proud. I gushed for, like, five minutes, maybe not that long. I still feel good. <laughs> <laughs> don't feed his ego too much I know maybe I need to fire him to like bring him down a little bit <laughs> but that's the biggest thing and that's why like when we're talking about faces when I'm talking about planes when I'm talking about these different things foreshortening is a great example where your brain tells you what you're seeing and usually your brain sees things totally flat two-dimensional right on top of it but that's not how we see things in person and so just taking the time to look at um, the actual shape of it um, and the actual coloring of it and the highlights of it that's half the battle 
Um, so if you really take the time to do that, then you're, you're doing yourself a huge favor when it comes to art. So I'm, I just used water to spread some color around and now I'm dropping in like this really dark, I mixed, you can see here I have this kind of huge puddle of color and I'm just introducing that. So it's kind of like a brown, a green brown, but I'm putting in some of those really dark values and colors in there. I'm kind of just going crazy with this paint. You don't need yeah, to put this are. much paint on your palette. I'm just living on the edge. I'm well, just I mean, going you crazy. Can if you want to. We just have all the paint. We so. <laughs> we have so much paint, so why not? Judy Horrell says, "I think Keenan is definitely Ravenclaw." Thank you. No. <laughs> she says, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's just trying to get on your good side, Keenan. <laughs> well, it worked. <laughs> well, it worked. Uh, but I also know that I one of my really good friends is Ravenclaw, and that totally that fits her because she's extremely studious. I'm saying that right, right? Studious. Yeah. Thank you. You're talking about owls, right? Yep. Yep. You got it. Okay, so I got my tree, and then now you can take your two if you want to go in and do some smaller little dashes along the sides here and introduce some small marks. Like so. If you want to do some really, this is nice and wet, so I'm going to drop in some dark color in there. Teresa says that Michael is Ravenclaw. He shares all the facts. <laughs> Teresa, you are close. He's actually a Slytherin. Really? Yeah, my husband's a Slytherin. Do you know what's funny is when you get a Slytherin on the Pottermore website, they send you an email that says, like, don't be sad. It's okay. <laughs> no <laughs> way. They have to do that. Slytherins aren't bad. No, but they're, so as they're associated with bad, and so they're just like, you're not a bad person. Oh, I have a great hug <laughs> tattoo. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I actually have the dark mark on my tongue. Really? Yeah. What the? <laughs> I love Harry Potter so much. It's the first tattoo I ever got. I love it so much. <laughs> Harry Potter is really amazing. Yes, it is. My husband's not a, as big of a fanatic as I am. Neither is mine which was a problem in our youth. <laughs> yeah, but I've grown, I've forgiven him, and actually we're reading, <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we have the illustrated ones and we read them to our seven-year-old and so oh, he, it's like cute. he's experiencing Harry awesome. Potter. Yeah, the illustrated ones are gorgeous yeah. and a lot of them are watercolor actually. Really? So if you look through them, oh, they're so beautiful. Okay, if you wanna do a second tree over here, you're more than welcome to. I'm gonna do like a little hint. Got some room. So I'm just gonna have it coming off the side. Again, if you don't want one, don't do it. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Oh, um, Tamara asked to see the tattoo. Can you reach oh, over yeah, and here. show the dark mark? Yeah. <laughs> I just hope that's a good that's angle. angle. <laughs> Ooh, I'm uh. <laughs> Raina says she's a Slytherin too. Wow. We got Lots some. Lots of Slytherins in the group chat. Gotta represent. Campbell, you found your people. <laughs> still no word from Campbell. <laughs> He's still just Absolutely nodded. Nothing. Oh, Tamara said she never knew about the illustrated ones. Okay, not all of them are out yet. I think just the first three. So they're releasing them and I'm, even if you don't have little kids, the the paintings in them are so beautiful. Like truly, if if you like Harry Potter, like buy those and just look through them and marvel at their beauty because they're amazing. 
You're like, go to the store and buy one now. <laughs> I'm like, stop <laughs> painting, put down your paintbrush, walk away and buy one of those we'll books. Be we'll be here we'll when you get back. Go. Show me your receipt because I care about this. <laughs> uh. So I'm going in and messing up my marks because they were too even. So I'm kind of like... Um, Whenever I see something that's too e too even, I just take my paintbrush and just do a thick, like swab across it to mess that up. A thick one. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like your little textures. Thank you. Good job. Yeah, look at your little textures, Campbell. Good job. And if you want to do water dots in there, you can. Okay. I think that's it, you guys. You did it. You're all amazing. I'm going to uh, let this dry for a second and then we'll peel off the tape. Now, my friends, peeling off tape is a tricky business because if you do it very fast and tough, you will rip your paper. So the way that I, what? All caps question. Okay, you got it? How do you find out what Harry Potter house you're in? Okay, go, go to Pottermore. It's a website and there's a test. And you take the test and it's very serious and it's amazing. You can also find out what your Patronus is. If yes. You're I really, and you can take your Hogwarts house, your mm -hmm. Ilver Morning house. You can find out what wand you have and your Patronus. I took all of them. I took my Patronus test, but I wasn't super happy with my results, and so I forgot it. Maybe I need to retake it. Mine's a, I didn't a weasel, I think. I feel like mine was a cat. I don't know. I'm pretty sure mine's <laughs> You're like otter. something boring. An otter? Really? Maybe that one was mine. Now I can't remember. <laughs> now I can't remember. Dang. I need to retake it. Okay. <laughs> okay, just sorry. Like just Campbell right now. So, <laughs> sorry, oh, Campbell. That's right. I didn't mean to do that to your patroness. <laughs> I'm sure it means a lot to you, and I'm sorry I made fun of that. Okay, moving on. When you're pulling tape away, you want to go away from the paper. So you start from the tape that's on the inside, and you do it little piece by piece, slowly, nice and slow. If you do this very fast it could rip and the reason why I say slowly is if you do it really fast and it rips there's nothing you can do about it because you just ripped it off so if you go slow and you see that it starts to rip then you can like hold it down and try and stop it from ripping also you want to pull away from your paper because if you did it the other side and we're pulling this way and it did tear it would tear into your painting where if you pull away it would only tear the edge paper now my painting isn't totally dry, but I'm still gonna do this. Yeah, if you're I at, I started on my other side, so I didn't mess. Well, that you're up. smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm a Ravenclaw. Maybe you are. <laughs> Plot twist. Plot twist. We all lied about our houses. I'm really Slytherin. I got the letter that says you're not bad. I got the letter that says you're not bad. That's how she knows about That's it. That's how I know. Um. Marcy oh, Clark says, I'm a muggle. I'm too lazy to be a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> or she's a squib. Do squibs still get sorted? Maybe. I don't What's know. a squib? No, because they, they, can't, they can't train to have magic because they oh, yeah. aren't magic. So Filch and... Is a, uh, it's a non-magical wizard. Uh, whose parents are wizards. Yeah. Ooh, awkward. You don't have the ability to... Uh, you don't have magic <laughs> abilities. That's actually what Keenan is. <laughs> I'm a squib. Oh, somebody asked if I would shadow underneath the tree. You're right. Sorry, I forgot that part. But you can do that even with the tape off. So I'm still going to keep going. Oh, oh, I see that. Okay. Okay. I got you. So I'm pulling away. Ooh, that one I did fast and it tore a little bit. Sarah. I need to calm down and slow down. Okay. So. Uh, if you want to do a shadow underneath your tree, you just get some dark brown. And um, you can just put some, some dark color underneath there. Like so. I've known a few of the kids, but I've actually never taped it. Really? Like even when I'm tracing or anything, never taped it. 
You never tape when you trace. That's impressive. Wait, how do you what? how do you tape not when move you your trace? Yeah, you take your outline down so it doesn't move while you're doing I the lines. I've never done that. You, I'm impressed by both of you. <laughs> because my paper would move while I'm tracing it. Yeah. Okay, so you're just going to add a little bit of a dark brown underneath your tree to give yourself a little bit of a shadow. So as a pre-warning for all our regular viewers, uh, because of our new angle, we can't do a show-off, zoom into the face, uh, Sarah pose. <laughs> We'll just hold them up to the camera. Yes. Yes. Do a simultaneous pose. Simultaneous. Look at that Ooh. Clean line. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what did you do for the shadow? You just. Did I just did dark. a. I just did this a dark, dark. brown. Mm -hmm. okay. And if it's too red, mix some green in there. That will neutralize the red. And then you just do a little dark part underneath the tree. Because they're opposite each other on the color wheel. Exactly. Because Compliment. <laughs> yes, we do have color wheels on our website, or you can make one. Um, they're super, super helpful to know. If you know complementary colors, then it makes color mixing way easier to understand, and it will help you a lot. So we even have a video in our beginner series on our YouTube channel that is goes over color theory a little bit. So if you want to familiar, familiarize yourself, that's a great video to watch. You guys ready to hold them up? Yeah. Okay. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Beautiful. Maybe hold them out, push them out. Oh, wait, is it fuzzy now? No, it looks good. Oh, good. These look great. Good Ooh. job, you guys. Oh. Look at your thick boys, Campbell. Thick boys. I love how yellow his grass is. I know. And the texture, really cool. look at the cool. texture he got here on the bottom of his grass. <gasps> That's so cool. That's so great. That's what watercolor dreams are made of, I feel. <laughs> That's okay. what you dream of at night. It is what I dream of. Okay. So, anyways, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for painting with us. Um, if you did paint with us, please share your work. I know it's so scary putting yourself out there because you're afraid that maybe somebody will say something mean or it's not good enough or blah, blah, blah. But the reason why I like putting your art out there is, one, it gives courage to the people to gives people courage to try something. And two, when people share their art, even if it's not perfect, then that kills the perpetual belief that it has to be perfect and people are born with this skill and it comes perfect every single time and that is not how it truly is, okay? As somebody who has been painting for a long time, I mess up and I have to do things over again and I have to practice and that's how you learn. So. Share it wherever you are on your journey and also use the opportunity to look at other people's as a way to learn from them. It doesn't matter where they are, you can learn something from them. I love how Campbell did the texture on the bottom of his grass. I love these little detail lines that Jojo got on the edge of her tree. Th those are great things that I can pay attention to and apply to my own work. So take the time to share, take the time to be brave. If you put it on Instagram, you can tag us in it. Let's go make art or hashtag let's make art. Um, Facebook, we have a wonderful Facebook group that is separate from our business page. It's called Let's Make Art Watercolor and it's only for sharing projects that you're working on or projects with us and it's a really great supportive community. So if you're not comfortable posting it on your public feed, then you can join that group and share it there. It's a lot of fun. Do you have a question? I have a all caps question. Yeah. How can you get to paint with Sarah on YouTube? On the, with here? Yeah, here, with us. You just gotta be willing to drive out to Hamilton, Missouri, which. We can only seat four and a half people. Yeah. <laughs> just contact us. Yeah. Hello at Let's Make Art. Say you're interested in painting in the live and I'll put you on the schedule. That's it. That's all I gotta say. Perfect. Good job, you guys. Thank Sweet. you guys for painting with me. Woo. Thank you.